So you've just got your new Pimax crystal and your eye racing looks like this. Let's get it looking like this. But don't be worried about the overwhelming amount of settings that we have here. We're going to point out the main ones you want to look at and change. But we're going to make one assumption and that's you've installed all the software that's relevant for your headset. Pimax crystal in this case. If you haven't, I'm going to point you to another video that may help you. Alrighty, so the first one we're going to have a look at here is a Pimax client. So you've got your beautiful new Pimax crystal. 120 hertz displays. So we're going to try and utilize that refresh rate and we're going to try and achieve those frames for you. So we're going to click that one. Not so worried about the eye tracking or any of these other um, buttons here at the moment, but we're going to jump straight into the games tab. In that games tab, we're going to hit balance in the resolution here. Now that is 0.75 times resolution. Don't worry so much about that. We're going to be tweaking that setting in just a minute. Alrighty. Let's get rid of that one and go straight into the NVIDIA control panel. Alrighty, so we've booted up NVIDIA control panel here. We're going to click on the Manage 3D Settings tab. Now we want to make sure, first off, that our GPU is set to use all of our CUDA cores. So make sure that's all. Low latency mode is set to Ultra. And power management mode is set to prefer maximum performance. Lastly, make sure VSync is off. That'll do us here, but feel free to pause the video at any time and copy my settings. Okay, next up, we're going to have a look at the iRacing settings. Okay, so we're going to jump into the options tab here. And we want to ensure that we're maxing our performance whilst not compromising too much quality here. So I recommend dropping all settings to their lowest values aside from the ones I'm about to mention. Okay, so cars, we want to set this one to high detail because hopefully we're going to be up close and personal with them quite often. Okay, so foliage is next up. Even though this only works with one track at the moment, I found this doesn't have a huge strain on the system and there is extra detail rendered in to use as track markers. So I leave this one set to medium. Anastropic filtering has a minor effect on performance, so I leave this one set to 16 times. AA samples, so this is a big one. Because we're dealing with such a clear display here, I want to remove a few of those jaggies in the distance. I'm using this at FXAA two times to minimize performance loss whilst ensuring we remove some of those jagged lines. Okay, so video mem swap high res cars and 2048 by 2048 textures, we're going to leave those ticked. Lastly, if we have spare resources, we want to max out our GPU and system memory sliders. Okay, lastly, and this is a big one, we want to stop using SteamVR and use OpenXR. So this relieves a lot of the pressure on the back end that SteamVR loads up your system with and we can achieve a much better frame rate at higher resolutions. Alrighty, so next up, we're going to move across to the menu tab here. And we're going to tweak that resolution like I mentioned earlier. This will be the single biggest place to find performance on most of our systems. Because we're dealing with such high resolutions, our systems are going to struggle. The aim here is to reduce the resolution to the point you aren't being annoyed by the drop in clarity whilst being able to sustain your desired frame rate. So you're still not at your desired frame rate? Interesting. Okay, one more thing then. Let's look at OpenXR Toolkit and how it can show you frame timings and why you might want to have a look there to see what's bottlenecking your system. Okay, so the basic principle here is your CPU and GPU frame timings need to be under a certain number to achieve the frame rate that you want. Okay, so to get this up, we're going to jump into the OpenXR Toolkit and we're going to bring up the Advanced FPS Display. Okay, so this one's a bit tricky. There's a formula you want to follow to see what that number is that you want to be under. Okay, so the formula is 1000 divided by your desired frame rate. So in this case, I'm trying to hit 120 frames a second. So 1000 divided by 120 is 8. Now you definitely want to leave a little bit of headroom in the GPU frame timings so that you don't get any dips. The CPU seems to be a lot more stable and this can sit around 8.2. With the GPU, we really want to be seeing that at 7 or less in the frame timings. If we need to find some gains here, we're going to have to lower that resolution a little bit more or reduce some of the stress on the GPU. Alrighty, so all that's left is to get out there and have some fun. Show everyone what you got. If you made it this far, you can leave me a thumbs up, subscribe if you'd like, and leave a comment down in the comment section. Until next time, enjoy.